Hello guys, how are you doing? I believe you're having a beautiful uh, day today, but for me it's rather a bit sad of a day because uh, I lost my grandfather who is the father to my mother and uh, it's a really a sad day for us because he was a great man uh, just generally like any other great man any other great family member that uh, we always have in our lives but there's something a little bit exceptional about my grandfather which made me do this video and I want this video to encourage you uh, when it comes to general life and also uh, to encourage you when it comes to uh, business and encourage you when it comes to just improving yourself in whichever way. Um, just if, if you are very keen on my videos, you saw the video that I did the other time about uh, my trip. Uh, for Christmas where we are going to have a good time with my grandfather we went and visited him he was a bit sickly he was um, having a, a, this uh, sicknesses for old people that is of course uh, blood pressure and, and uh, sugar and, and all those kind of uh, diseases for old people but he was really a strong man who kept himself as uh, hard as possible just to make sure that everything works out well and uh, the reason I'm doing this video is not just to mourn but to celebrate a life and of course be able to um, be able to learn a few things from uh, the story uh, from the life of this uh, man so um, before I start let me give you a little brief history of who this man was my grandfather who is called uh, um, Stephen Kisusia Musao uh, Musao is basically the name that I was given my middle name is Keith Musao Muoki Musao so I am called after uh, after him and uh, so he meant a lot to me he meant a lot to me and he's mentored me in so many ways when it comes to life and many other ways so he was born some time back I don't uh, really know the exact date but I, I believe it's around 40s 1940s somewhere there he was born and uh, he did not really go to school because uh, the only education he had he had was up to class three that is uh, all the education that he had but uh, he was a very energetic and go-getter kind of a person because uh, back in the days he was working as a as a houseboy for the colonialist and uh, he was doing he used to do ironing of clothes for them, uh, shining shoes. I remember he used to tell us all the time that whenever you shine a shoe, make sure that you can see your picture in that shoe. That's how much focused and 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 uh, perfectionist he was. So he always taught us that whenever you do something, do it with all your might and make sure that you achieve the goal that you want to set. So uh, apart from that, he was. Uh, uh, um, also a business person he was able to uh, gather a lot of wealth for himself that is back in the days by selling goats and selling sheep uh, selling cows he could trek all the way you know cambas are known to be long distance traders he could walk from one area to another buy some goats here and go and sell at a higher price in another different place walking all through there were no cars those back in those days he accumulated a lot of wealth from selling cattle and of course after that he started buying land he bought uh, different acres of land and then at some point he was among us one of the wealthiest people that uh, we could ever think in the area of uh, Masinga and Katuli and Kiva and those areas because he had hectares and hectares of land and um, of course properties buildings and at one, time, at one time, he was also awarded the best, uh, the longest serving petrol station dealer in Kenya. That is Caltech, Caltex Petrol Station. The, the, the petrol station you'll find at Masinga is still owned by him, even to date. And it has been there for, uh, for, for, for a long, long, long time. Actually, it was the, among the first petrol stations, Caltex in Kenya. He was awarded that uh, for holding business in, an, in a level whereby he never stops. He's been all through consistent working his way out. And as well, he had an hardware, even as the time, by the time he was dying, he was still uh, 
staying at his hardware which is at Masinga. The main village is at uh, Katulie but uh, he never really wanted to go to Katulie so much because he wanted to concentrate and just stay where his business was and just to, it, no matter how old he was but he was just one person who was so much focused in building wealth and just being consistent in whichever things that he wanted to do so in general he was a wealthy man he was a very respected man in the community he was a great guy who uh, was a disciplinarian everybody feared him as well so there are various things that I've been able to learn from the death of my grandfather and I want to tell you shortly so that you can be able to be inspired in one way or another so the point number one that I'll tell you uh, that I learned from the death of my grandfather is build wealth when you can build wealth when you can many a times that we have opportunities to build wealth and we keep on uh, relaxing and we don't want to do uh, to, to go and pursue our our ideas that we have in mind my grandfather always worked towards his dreams no matter how much he did not excel in school because that time school could not uh, help you in whichever way because there were no schools uh, he did not relent or look back upon himself or see uh, because I don't have not achieved in my education I cannot build wealth. He started from uh, the smallest things that he could be able to do that is uh, selling gold, selling chicken from one corner where you buy cheaper and you go and sell higher and that one thing made him to become a very exceptional business person and as you continue doing the same you gain experience you gain ideas you gain knowledge of doing things better and better and becoming a better business person so uh, one thing is build wealth when you can because it will come a time that you will not be able to build this wealth if you could not have built this wealth over the years before other people got into the market maybe he could not have been as wealthy as he was by the time of his death so uh, and of course investment is key as he built wealth from selling cows he did not just stay there selling cows he started uh, buying pieces of land he started building um, uh, buildings started investing here investing there investing in circles he was trying as much as he can to build wealth all around him and that is what sustained him even to by the time he was uh, he was dying he was one person who really never even needed to work so that he can make a living and he did not need to really expect a lot of things from people i i remember the time that um, we got blessed by him uh, he called us for some blessing ceremony and uh, after that you can imagine he had two wives and uh, a number of children and those children have children and children children you know it's it's a big community and all of us who came there he gave us uh, a lot of gifts he gave us money transport fare for all those people who did not have and he was an old man and not that people went there to ask him for money no he was a very generous man he will always give out things to people he will always help other people whenever they um, they need help he has educated so many people so another thing that i learned is that whenever you have money be a giver because the more of a giver you are the more you're going to be blessed and the more opportunities are going to come over and over to 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 uh, bring in the better you that you've always wanted to be and the other point that i will tell you is keep family close whenever you have the chance you know keep family close whenever you have the chance or whenever uh, uh, possible because you will need them at some point the reason i'm saying keep family close is that i've told you my grandfather was an exceptional businessman who uh, put in a lot of wealth for himself but it reached a time that he could not be able to help himself from the last video that you saw uh, you could see him being fed by his brother being fed by uh, his daughter that is my auntie and my mother and uh, all of us we always came there I remember I also bought him a, a wheelchair to push uh, himself over and over just outside there to uh, to get some rays of light and, and, and all that at that point what he needed was not his money to help him but the people who are closer to him are the only people who could be able to help him in whichever thing 
he wanted to do he could not feed himself he could not feed himself using his money he could not feed himself using any other thing it reaches a time that your money cannot save you the only thing which can save you is the people who are close to you people who care about you so that is one of the things that i also learned that keep family close keep people who you love close because one day one time you will need them to help you out somewhere the other thing that I learned is that money can't buy you life or buy you friends. If there was a way that my grandfather could just go and purchase a little more extra time for himself, he could have done that. But it's not possible. You cannot purchase life. You cannot purchase friends. There are people who come just because of the goodies. But the real, real people who love you, family and friends, you cannot be able to buy them using money. So cultivate cultivate as much as you can good friendships good uh, relationships because you can get this one out of money you the people who work so much to gain wealth but they forget one simple thing that you can't buy people you can't buy good friendships you can buy good relationships and as well you cannot buy life that is one thing that you should always understand so be good to others don't steal from people don't do things bad things to people because a time will come all these things will be left and you'll have nothing else to say you will leave all the wealth you will leave everything that you could uh, you worked for so that is a lesson learned the other uh, thing that i like to tell you is learn to forgive others in the in the in his journey of life he was able to uh, meet so many people along the way some people maybe you clash here and there you clash here and there some people that you know as a business person you love friends and enemies on every different corner because on your way to success not everybody will like you not everybody will hate you but uh, in his deathbed one thing he always talked to us is that he said that he wanted us to be as united as possible to keep us close to be close to each other just to make sure that as much as we are a big family we are close to each other forgive each other whoever has done anything wrong to you just forgive them just be with them because you you will not stay with an enmity with other people and be a successful person he always told us whoever uh, i feel i've done anything wrong to him or whoever has done me anything wrong let's forgive each other let's embrace each other because life is all about building ourselves we only have one earth we only have one life and that is the life that he wanted us to live to forgive any person to forgive any um, person who did something to to us or any person who you did something to bad please just go and tell them to forgive you that is one thing that you always talked about and i learned it is a major major thing and the other point that I also learned is that if possible please write a will write a will and give it to your lawyer and do not disclose your will before you die this is one critical thing that i learned from the death of my grandfather my grandfather one day just like i told you he called us all of us and he told us guys from the look of things i am getting older and older and my days are coming uh, to the closer to the end and I would like to bless all of you and also give you a, a present. And the present was he gave his inheritance to people before the time of his death. For me, I feel that was a big mistake that he did. Uh, he may have done it out of will or out of uh, not really knowing if it was the right thing. But for me, I think it was the wrong decision that he did. Why am I saying this? because he gave out houses buildings petrol station uh, land cars everything that he had he, he allocated this one is yours this one will be yours this one will be yours this one will be yours and he gave them verbally and explained to every person that these are the things that we have given all of you so guys stay in harmony enjoy have a good time and during my last few days that i'm about to die just take care of me just be with me and all those kind of things but there's one thing which really happened uh i won't really want to get in depth of exactly what happened but immediately after giving out things and letting other people uh giving out things and 
just dispersing whatever uh, he had it got to a point that little fewer and fewer people wanted to spend time and and uh, just be close and uh, give him the attention that he needed and i tend to think that is because whenever you have understood i own this i've been given this i've been given this you necessarily don't want to think about it. how do i need to show gratitude to this old man uh, whereby i've already known what i'll be owning and i just maybe if he dies today i'll own this i'll own this i'll own this for me i think if it was a better if there was a, a better way for me to uh, i could explain to him if or if he was here of course he was a disciplinarian he's a guy that you cannot just go and tell him your ideas and your two cents decisions but uh, according to me i think writing a will is much more better because if the will well, if he could have come in this party and tell us guys have written a will and this will is with the lawyer and the lawyer will disperse the will to people uh, the lawyer mr abcd or the lawyer law firm abcd will disperse my wealth to you guys after my this uh, my death so guys i wish you stay in harmony be cool and take care of me on my last days on, on earth and whoever will not take care of me during my last days on earth i'll go and amend the same on on the will or i will go and change something and give to the person who uh, was taking care of me or I just say one word to the lawyer to change something or you know a, a little spike on the same i think that one could have changed the way the last days were like yes in every family you will always see their wrangles here and there especially when a rich man dies and their properties involved you have seen so much like even here in kenya we always hear stories about kirima we always hear stories about uh, michuki family we always hear stories of there, there are many stories i don't mean to uh, be specific on any family i've just given an example but these wrangles come when people do not there is no a proper plan of succession of properties and especially properties and things usually divide people and make people start fighting over things so for me i will tell you if you are a rich person or if you you your family to a rich person somewhere and you know they're they're they're, they're at some point you can really see they're getting old or just general even if you're not getting old or something you know you're rich and anything happens you know we're living in in a world whereby you never know about tomorrow please write a will and that will let it be with a lawyer do not disclose or give out your your things when you're still alive people might neglect you people might stay away from you because they already know what they own they already know what they need to have and they already know I have this I have this I have this so why should I take care of you why should I come closer to you but this one is not meant to bring any fear or to say there's any wrangles but for me I feel the way we used to go and see my grandfather back in the days before he gave out his properties and he gave out his things it, it was a little bit different from how it was during his last days people became fewer and fewer we are so many we are so many but people became fewer and fewer and fewer and uh, issues left right and center other people want to see him others don't want to see him stories like that and and i believe this one was brought because every person knew exactly what he had achieved from this man who was already given if i own this if i own this if i own this maybe somebody was given something he did not want or another one was given more you feel him bad for it, it, it all happens but those are some of the lessons that I've been able to learn from the death of my grandfather. I hope it has opened up your mind, especially when it comes to general life and of course in business, you can start from anywhere. You can become any person that you've wanted to be because I believe all that you need is not just the papers. It is thinking right, thinking right and opening up your mind. And when you have the chance, put people who matter close to you thank you very much i really uh, am humbled for this day hope you subscribe to my channel there's a subscription button there and as well you can uh, click that notification button so that you don't miss any more video which can help you grow your brain and grow yourself thank you and god bless you and have a beautiful beautiful time